How do thousands of gold bars come to life in a factory? Gold, the ultimate precious metal, is a timeless symbol of wealth, power, and elegance. From raw or to gleaming bars, the transformation journey is far more complex and perilous than it seems. Since their discovery several millennia ago, methods for refining and manufacturing ingots have continued to evolve and improve. In the past, rudimentary techniques based on melting and casting were used. Today, modern technology has made it possible to achieve unprecedented levels of purity and precision. Fascinating mankind for over 5,000 years, gold held a sacred place among the Egyptians, who considered it divine flesh, while the Roman Empire made it a standard of power by minting its coins. However, the concept of a standardized ingot as we know it today only emerged between the late 19th and early 20th centuries, when governments and central banks decided to store their reserves in the form of uniform gold bars. A gold ingot, or bar, refers to a mass of refined gold manufactured to precise shapes and specifications. Its production takes place within a strict framework where every detail, from labeling to registration, is meticulously controlled. The London Bullion Market Association sets the rules to ensure each bar meets strict criteria for weight, size, and purity. So how is a gold bar actually made? The process is extremely sophisticated and requires cutting-edge equipment, advanced chemical expertise, and high-level technical know-how to transform raw or into dazzling bars. It all starts with extraction. Gold is buried in the Earth's crust, often mixed with quartz or various sulfides. The extraction method depends on the nature and depth of the deposit. Open-pit mining is preferred for deposits close to the surface. It involves removing thick layers of earth and rock, called overburden, to expose the gold bearing ore. Gigantic machines, such as hydraulic excavators and powerful haul trucks, extract and transport impressive quantities of material. Once extracted, the ores are transported, either by truck or conveyor, to processing sites. These open pit mining operations are on a colossal scale. Some operations move several tons of ore every day. Safety requires extensive geological studies and continuous monitoring to ensure the stability of the quarries. This method offers high yields, making it ideal for shallow deposits. Underground mining, on the other hand, is used to reach deeper veins. It involves digging vertical shafts and galleries to follow the gold veins. Techniques such as drilling or blasting break up the rock, which is then transported to the surface using conveyors or conveyor systems. In this type of mine, safety is paramount. Seismic sensors, reinforced supports, and ventilation systems protect workers from collapses or accidents. Once extracted, the ore is immediately crushed to reduce its size and facilitate transport to the plant. Crushing and grinding then follow. The raw or must be prepared before beginning the extraction process. Initially, Jaw or gyratory crushers reduce the rock blocks into more manageable fragments. These phases, often in two stages, first divide the ore into gravel-like pieces before secondary crushing further reduces the size to make it suitable for grinding. Grinding carried out in huge ball or semitogenous sag. Mills pulverizes the ore into a fine powder. The heavy steel balls or bars rotating in these machines break the rock using kinetic energy. To enhance the process, water is added, creating a fluid pulp. Sophisticated sensors ensure continuous control of the particle size, optimizing energy consumption and maximizing gold recovery. Next comes separation and concentration. This step aims to isolate the gold from unnecessary minerals. Several techniques are used. Gravimetric separation relies on the high density of gold, which distinguishes it from lighter particles. Shaking tables and spiral concentrators separate the heavy elements from the waste. While highly effective for coarse particles, this method becomes less effective for fine particles, requiring additional processes. Flotation is a more advanced method. It involves introducing chemical reagents that make the gold hydrophobic. An injection of air bubbles then carries the gold to the surface, fixed on the scum, where it is recovered. This process, highly dependent on chemistry, ensures an excellent yield for microscopic gold. 
Cyanidation, on the other hand, is one of the most widespread techniques. By mixing the ore pulp with a cyanide solution, the gold forms a soluble compound. It is then recovered by precipitation, using powdered zinc or activated carbon, producing a gold-rich concentrate. Once this concentrate is obtained, it moves on to the smelting and refining stage. Heated to over 1,200 degrees Celsius in specialized furnaces and melt it with fluxes such as borax, which trap impurities in the form of slag. The molten gold, now separated from the waste, is poured into molds to form semi-pure bars. The final refining achieves exceptional purity. Two processes dominate, electrolysis and orgal. Electrolysis dissolves gold in a gold chloride solution, redepositing it in pure form on cathodes. Orgal, a mixture of nitric and hydrochloric acid, dissolves the gold before it is filtered and remelted. These methods result in gold of 99.99% purity, meeting world standards. The purified gold is then remelted in induction furnaces and then poured into molds calibrated to international standards, including the London Good Delivery Bar. Cooling is achieved by immersion in water or exposure to air, ensuring perfect solidification. More and more factories are using robotics to handle the hot molds, reducing risks and improving productivity. After demolding, each bar is carefully inspected for any imperfections. Shaping and engraving then follow. Automated machines correct excess material and polish the contours. Next, a laser engraving inscribes key information, weight, purity, refinery logo, and serial number. Some ingots even feature micro-engravings invisible to the naked eye serving as protection against counterfeiting. Each ingot undergoes rigorous quality control. X-ray fluorescence or spectrometry analyses verify purity, while digital measuring tools control dimensions. Conforming bars are packaged under tamper-evident seals and accompanied by a certificate of authenticity. Thus, each ingot leaving the factory is a piece of engineering and craftsmanship ready to be integrated into the vaults, reserves, or portfolios of investors around the world. But these factories, beyond their image of prosperity, are also high-risk places. Huge quantities of gold attract covetousness, and security is at its highest. Armed guards, cameras, ultra-reinforced safes, and biometric check screen every employee. Transport is carried out in escorted armored vehicles equipped with GPS and advanced protection. At the same time, danger is ever-present for the workers, Extreme heat from the furnaces, toxic chemicals, and gigantic machines capable of causing serious accidents. Every move must be executed with pinpoint precision. But be careful, that's not all. The rest of this video will be just as exciting. So stay tuned until the end. And most importantly, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming content. There are stories so incredible that they make you want to listen until the very end without even realizing it. Among them, the story of the diamond stands out as a fascinating journey where nature and humanity meet. Each precious stone is not just a shiny jewel placed on a ring or displayed in a showcase, it is the trace of a journey that began billions of years ago in the very depths of our planet. By discovering this unique adventure together, you will understand why this mineral became far more than a simple luxury item. And believe me, what you are about to hear is worth following all the way to the very end. The highest price ever paid for a diamond exceeds $71 million. With such an amount, you could buy more than 10 luxury house, reserved for the global elite. Yet it is not only the price that makes this gem so extraordinary. It is its exceptional formation, its nearly unmatched hardness, and its history so deeply tied to that of humanity. A diamond is born in conditions that few things on Earth could ever withstand. Buried more than 200 kilometers beneath the Earth's crust, in a zone called a mantle, carbon is subjected to pressures and temperatures so extreme that its structure transforms, giving birth to one of the strongest materials we know. Understand this, without that rare combination of pressure and heat, carbon does not become a diamond, but instead turns into simple graphite, the soft material in pencils. 
It is this rarity that gives the stone its immense value. After millions of years underground, some diamonds were pushed closer to the surface by ancient volcanic eruptions. They became trapped in special rocks, known as kimberlites. And that is where humans began their quest, searching the earth for treasures formed long before our species even existed. But before going any further, take just a second to do something simple that makes a huge difference. Hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell. Why? Because what you are discovering here is only part of this extraordinary journey, and by subscribing you'll be sure not to miss the next equally fascinating stories. Now that this is said, let's continue our journey into the heart of the diamond. The exploration begins long before the first blow of a pickaxe. Geologists use satellites, gravity sensors, and magnetic instruments to detect anomalies that might indicate the presence of deposits. Sometimes a single fragment of kimberlite found in sediments is enough to trigger a full expedition. When a site is confirmed, massive open pit mines are dug, carving huge spirals into the earth that can go down hundreds of meters. In other cases, when the diamonds lie too deep, underground mines are built. These tunnels descend up to 800 meters below ground, where heat and humidity make the work even more grueling. And yet, all this effort is for just a few tiny stones. On average, more than 250 tons of rock must be processed to obtain a single carat, a stone barely larger than the tip of a pencil. After the explosions that break the rock, blocks are transported to gigantic crushers capable of grinding even granite. But beware, despite their hardness, diamonds are also brittle, a poorly placed shock can shatter them into worthless fragments. That is why crushing force must be calibrated with extreme precision. Once the blocks are reduced to fragments, the next step is washing. Large rotating drums, high-pressure water jets, and vibrating screens clean away the mud and dust. The resulting material is called concentrated ore. This is where modern technology steps in. X-ray scanners detect the unique glow emitted by diamonds when exposed. In just a fraction of a second, a burst of compressed air ejects the gem from the rest of the flow. This method allows diamonds to be recovered with amazing precision and almost no loss. Then comes the sorting stage. Rough diamonds are classified by their size, shape, clarity, and color. Some will enrich luxury jewelry, others less perfect will be used in industrial tools where only their hardness matters. But for those destined to become jewels, the journey continues. Each stone is analyzed with 3D scanners revealing its internal flaws and the way it reflects light. Specialized software then calculates the best way to cut the stone. Sometimes a large diamond is divided into smaller ones to avoid flaws. Others, rare and pure, are left intact to become unique pieces. Cutting begins with powerful lasers, able to separate the stone along its most fragile lines without breaking it. Then, artisans use diamond-coated wheels to polish each facet. Only a diamond can polish a diamond. Every angle, every surface must be calculated with mathematical precision, because it is the perfect geometry of the facets that creates the famous sparkle. The process can take weeks, but the result is a jewel that shines with an intensity nothing else can imitate. Once polished, the diamond goes to specialized laboratories such as the GIA or the IGI. There it receives an official certification specifying its weight, color, clarity, and cut. A unique code is engraved with a laser on its girdle. This code, invisible to the naked eye, guarantees its authenticity on the world market. At this stage, the stone can finally join the jewelry workshops. There, prestigious houses such as Cartier, Tiffany, or Harry Winston craft the metal to create pieces that enhance the stone. A diamond is never alone, it is always accompanied by a setting shaped by human hands. But behind this dazzling side lies a darker reality. In certain regions of Africa, notably Sierra Leone, Angola, and the Central African Republic, men, women, and even children still mine diamonds by hand. In the mud without protection, sometimes under the control of armed groups, they dig for stones that will finance deadly conflicts. 
These stones are called blood diamonds, because they are paid for in human suffering. A jewel that can light up a glamorous evening sometimes hides a story of misery and violence. That is why traceability has become crucial. Knowing where a stone comes from allows us to choose not just an object of beauty, but also a more responsible symbol. And yet, the story of the diamond does not end there. Thanks to advances in science, it is now possible to create synthetic diamonds. With technologies like HPHD or CVD, researchers reproduce in laboratories the same conditions as in the Earth's mantle. The result is a stone identical in chemistry and appearance to a natural diamond. Some companies go even further by transforming the ashes of departed loved ones into commemorative diamonds. A moving blend of science and emotion that allows a memory to be kept forever. Thus, the diamond is both natural and now also human, a stone at the crossroads of two worlds. When you look at a diamond, you don't just see a jewel. You see a story that of the earth, that of humanity, that of a symbol we ourselves have filled with meaning. A decisive turning point came in 1947, when De Beers launched the famous phrase, a diamond is forever. That slogan was not just a marketing success, it transformed the world's perception of diamonds. Since then, offering a diamond ring has become a universal ritual associated with eternal love. Entire generations have grown up with the idea that a diamond was not just a stone but a promise. Even today, the fascination continues. Whether at international auctions, in luxury jewelry stores, or in laboratories creating the diamonds of the future, this stone retains its unique status. The diamond is at once natural and cultural, scientific and emotional, precious and sometimes controversial. It is this contrast that makes it so captivating. So the next time you see a diamond sparkle, remember it is the fruit of an incredible journey, from the burning depths of the earth to the cold light of a showcase. And that journey deserves to be known, because behind every sparkle lies a story that connects geology, science, art, and humanity. If you enjoyed this story and want to discover more, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and activate the bell.